friends, welcome back. And we're moving into our final conversation for today uh, as we venture to talk about planning for emergencies. And who better to uh, tell us how to do this than the Belize Red Cross. So we have with us from the representing the Belize Red Cross, Fred Hunter. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. And uh, I, I want to say, of course, Happy New Year to you. Same to you. Yeah. And uh, thank you for preparing us for our, our hurricane season. And thankfully, uh, we were able to, to avoid any major threat this year. Yes, we, we were very fortunate. Mm -hmm. And um, we shouldn't take our good fortune for granted. Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. And, uh, and one thing that uh, you know, we were not noting at the office uh, this week, over the last month, the number of fire victims yeah. that have come in for assistance. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't give much. We, we usually like a hygiene kit, a pot set, some blankets, buckets, you mm -hmm. know, water containers. But the, um, just, just the number, yeah. like we're getting three, four a week. Uh, wow. Families, wow. You know, so you know, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that really is a part of why we're having this conversation. Um, and, and you have very often spoken about the definition of emergencies and uh, that we oftentimes only think about hurricanes, but there's so many other, other things that yeah. can take place. We, well, I'm always promoting <laughs> this, this time. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the family emergency plan. And like on the, the, the third page, you say, what is a disaster? Mm -hmm. And again, so a disaster is an event which mm -hmm. results in major loss of lives, livestock, serious injuries, and causes major disruption in daily living. Mm -hmm. Like in a small community, if there is a, a bus accident and a couple of the children get hurt, going to school or something like that becomes a major event for the whole community. Yeah. And some examples of events which cause disasters, because like I said, hurricane is the number one on the mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. Again, if you live in a huge concrete house with your backup <laughs> generator and your satellite dish tied down, you can watch cable <laughs> TV and get internet right through the hurricane and you're never affected. Right? Well, so it's I not mean, a disaster. You know, we, but we've seen in, in <laughs> Dominica last year where even the prime minister's home was damaged yeah. severely. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So it, you're never really, I, well, at least I think you're never really no. safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but the, the more vulnerable you are, the less prepared you are, yeah. the less, the more exposed you are, and the the more you are affected by a disaster, by yeah. an event that may cause a disaster. The others are floods. Um, See, floods happen without warning. Yeah. Drought, epidemic, war conflicts, chemical spill, mm -hmm. a bomb explosion, a mm -hmm. major traffic accident. And like I just mentioned, fires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in Belize, we've also had uh, tremors. Uh, right. We've experienced tremors from earthquakes. The that last one is earthquake. Yeah. Our last earthquake was in May of 2009, but mm -hmm. remember the big one that and it actually was a little bit smaller because it was the one that we experienced here was a 7.1 off the coast of Honduras that yeah. affected all the way up to Corozal and northern yeah. uh, Burgoski, all the way to the border. Because I always give the joke of Cala Creek. They had just raised the houses because of the floods in 2008. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> they, they didn't fasten them down and they were kind of dancing off. Oh oh, wow. The people had to run out of their houses in the middle wow. of the night. They, they, yeah. They're brand new. Their houses. <laughs> and I remember, the, the, was it was 2009 when they had the the, um, the tsunami warning right after we felt the intense tremors. We didn't really have a tsunami, but there was a warning in yes. the event that it would take the, place. The geologists explained that um, the, there's two kinds of movement along the fault lines, uh -huh. and that this one was yeah, yeah. not one that would have caused a tsunami, and that's mm -hmm. why we didn't have one, but the p probability, the possibility yeah. still exists, and that right. warning. Let me ask you something, because when we look at the devastating natural events taking place, natural disasters taking place from 
multiple intense hurricanes to massive earthquakes. Um, you know, there's so many, there were major floods in Asia. And we're seeing a lot of human impact, uh, people not being prepared, and perhaps it, it seems to be more frequent than, than what we're accustomed to. Uh, what's your perspective on all these things that are taking place? Oh, um, I was seven years old for Hurricane Hattie. I still remember. And certain areas, uh, like uh, certain areas that flooded back then. I remember standing at Paris Road in Ladyville. Mm -hmm. The high part of the road that's supposed to be, I don't know, 15 feet above sea level or something. And this old lady showing me on the tree where the water reached. She said the road was actually, people were walking across the road chest deep in water. Mm. Nobody remembers that. Mm -hmm. The last hurricane that hit Belize City mm -hmm. was 1978. Greta, that only brought an eight foot surge. Yeah. People forget the 18 foot surge we got for Hattie. Yeah. So it's a matter of awareness. We get caught up in our daily lives mm -hmm. and we forget or don't pay attention to history. Yeah. Um, they, and there's a lot, lots of evidence, even in our culture, that the Mayas, that the, these things happen. happen. Why are the pyramids shaped the way they are? Yeah. Not straight up and down. Yeah. Or, it's or quick, or quick yeah. proof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Lubantun, they say it was the blast that knocked the rocks down. Was it the blast or was it a tremor before that? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. So the ultimate point this morning is that we must plan for emergencies rather than wait for, wait for them to happen yeah. and, and, and yeah. get everything in place. And while the hurricane season is six months away, five months, five. Um, this is the best, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> don't change it. Uh, um, this is the best time to start to get prepared, right? Right. So tell us, what, what are some of the things we need to take into consideration? First of all, study your environment. And mm -hmm. like you said, we have to be proactive, not reactive. Yeah. So, and we have to visualize what scenarios may occur. What is going to be our response, especially with our children, our, our families, everybody needs to know exactly what to do when the time comes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always use the analogy of the basketball player and the, the team that practices is prepared. So when time for action, they do it automatically without thinking. Mm -hmm. S stopping there in the middle of the court. Okay, which play am I going to play? <laughs> no, it, it, it comes. You don't have time comes, for that. Yeah. No. The same thing in, in, a, in a disaster scenario, whether it's a fire, a tremor, an earthquake, a, a, a chemical spill, a, a, a huge explosion. You mm -hmm. know, where we have people always talking about these threats of these um, butane gas companies mm -hmm. in the middle of communities. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> There's the big um, fuel depot right mm -hmm. at the, in Port Loyola. Mm -hmm. Who knows? The, mm -hmm. Things have happened in other countries in other, ti in yeah. other times. Study your environment and... See and where your risks are. Where your risks are and how you will respond to each one of them. And practice with your family. Okay. So your this is a family well. conversation that you need to have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Including children. Especially. Why is that? Because, first of all, they're the, they're the ones that get overlooked. Mm -hmm. in these scenario before and after mm -hmm. and they always have a role to play and children are, m are the most affected by a disruption in their daily life mm -hmm. however if they have an, a task that they need to fulfill when a situation arrives and they practice it they won't feel that psychological stress, stress. as much if they are acting if they're just waiting and being dragged along or taken along, they, you know, they they will be affected them psychologically. Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't show up till months, months after. after. Okay, so you assess your environment and you identify risky areas or areas that may be risky. Right. What do you do next? What's the next step? 
try to mitigate, uh, in other words, uh, to, to lessen your, okay, like uh, standing furniture, try to bolt it to the walls. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't fall down, whether it's a tremor, you know. Yeah. Even a big truck pass, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or winds, or whatever it is. Um, always have your evacuation kit or your grab and go bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, in a waterproof container, photocopies or of, of your important what, documents, what, medications. What is in your evacuation kit, though? Um, right <laughs> here. It's uh, you. Your passport definitely <laughs> is one. Your, your important documents, uh, a change of clothes, your ba uh, medications, if you have any, um, some water, mm -hmm. at least for immediate needs, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, what do you call it, non-perishable foods, mm -hmm. uh, small tools, flashlight, extra batteries, mm -hmm. uh, waterproof uh, container with matches or lighters, mm -hmm. or, and um, there, there's, we have lists in here yeah. to give you, but then again, it's not just what's here. Yeah, Every, yeah. Everyone is. What's doing, important yeah. to you? Um, and it has to be something easy to carry as well. Right. You don't want to have a, a huge backpack that you're struggling to get out of the house with. Like uh, I'm always telling my, my sons, uh, make sure your hands are always free. Is it bike or it? No, keep your hands free. Put it on your back, mm. strap, strap it, it on, on your waist or something, yeah. try to keep because you never know. Yeah. And always be ready to climb, ready to run, yeah. <laughs> to do whatever. That is interesting. So I, I like that. So ideally, every household should have an evacuation kit. Per person. Yeah. Oh, per, per person. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Now, um, when you look at being able to financially prepare for uh, if a hurricane threat comes or recovering from these these things, how do you how do you make that uh, a part of your plan? Well, I know times are hard, and like a lot of people tell it, well, yes, I save a few canned things, you know, and but uh, come weekend, you know, I look at it and there's scanty cash, so I might as well eat that yeah, and buy it buy next week. But things like clothes, uh, important documents, medication, like that. yes, you can you have those. Have that, yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. have, and those are, are really more important. The, f the food and water, yes, they are important. But there's the opportunity to, to get them elsewhere. But okay. your, your personal things and your personal tools and like that, you yeah. should always have those prepared. You always speak about having a meeting point for the family in the event of any emergency. Actually, it should be plan A, B, or C. Okay. <laughs> so tell us, why? Because where will we be when disaster strikes? We could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. At work, at school, traveling, mm -hmm. shopping, fishing at the seaside. Um, you don't know where you're going to be. Yeah. So um, when there's something that will disrupt yeah. Especially if it's something like a tremor, a fire, a civil unrest, a, a bomb explosion. Yeah. Yeah. You should always have a, a prime point where you will reunite with your family. Mm -hmm. and, and if that, and then have a, a B and a C. Yeah. Just in case, that. you know, and, so and then everybody knows. I live knows. in Belize City and I say, okay, I'll, uh, family, we will meet at San Cas Plaza if there's ever anything. It could be tsunami, earthquake, bomb explosion, anything. Yes. But that seems to be ground zero. It's important that I have a plan B because we don't want to send them into danger, right? Exactly. Okay. So. And because people get displaced in, in, in emergencies. So quickly and so easily. Yeah. And like I said, most of these are unforeseen. You're not, you know, you're not like, okay, at, 10.15 this morning, there's going to be a fire and yeah. I'm going to be at that point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just happened. It, it happened. It, and it we're not talking, I mean, hurricanes, you have a bit more time, time. Mm -hmm. to prepare these things, but we're talking about sudden random emergencies that we just never know right. may happen. Yeah. So this is actually a pamphlet that, and, and we usually bring it out around hurricane time, but uh, as you're pointing out, it's not just for the hurricane season. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. It is for 
every day. Year-round preparation. 365. And here's an important one. What will we do with animals and pets? <gasps> <laughs> that came to importance because for some Maybe people... throw them away. No! <laughs> for some people, especially older people, their only family is their pets. Yeah. They don't see them yeah. as pets. Yeah. They are family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, for some it's recommended for, for their mental sanity yeah. that they have these mm -hmm. pets. Yeah. So uh, the, you know, pets aren't allowed in public shelters, etc. And the normal rule at the village level is, oh, set them free. Give them a fighting chance. Mm -hmm. Don't keep your chickens locked up yeah. in a cage yeah. that have will your dog flood. Chain your, up. Yeah. Unchain your dog. Uh, you know, let the cat climb up a tree, run <laughs> away from the dog, whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, release your animals. Or what do you do in the city? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In some place like San Pedro that has a large <coughs> number of retirees that have these yeah. pets that yeah. to them are their families. Mm -hmm. So there, there are people that are setting up in place uh, shelters. Mm -hmm. I, it hasn't happened yet. I've heard discussion over the last few years. I'm friendly? still waiting to see some action. Yeah. But um, I, I know like in San Pedro, there's a group of people that, that work together to, to house their pets in case of an emergency, uh, especially okay. for hurricanes since mm -hmm. they are so vulnerable to it. That because our, our, our shelters aren't animal friendly, no. right? No, you can't have No, and here. you can't have your pets. And, and it's only fair. I mean, we need the space for people. Yeah. Um, as much as I'm an animal lover, I, I, I recognize that we yeah. have limited right. space mm -hmm. for shelters. Um, so the reason I point that out is that you also have to make a plan that is includes your yeah, furry friends, right? Yes. So um, whether it means you're going to let them loose if you're in the countryside or you know, finding a place that you can go that will allow you to have your, your pet with you. Um, but those are plans made ahead of time, yeah. right? right? Okay, so these books are available at the Belize Red Cross? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I'm to ask you one thing that we can do uh, to be able to make us better prepared as families for emergencies, what would that be? One, one significant change we can start with. Sit down and talk, communicate. We, too many times we, uh, we, we make plans yeah. individually and we don't communicate. share them entirely with everyone. We don't sit down and make sure that everyone is on the same page. Yeah. We all have to be on the same page. It's so true. And, and it takes effort, to, it takes planning to yeah. make a plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. But uh, it, that's, it's awareness and communication. Let others know what you're thinking. Okay. Thank you so much for coming in. Of course, you can pick up one of these booklets at the Belize Red Cross and uh, put together your own plan in the event of any emergency. And we're not just talking about uh, hurricanes. Mm -hmm. You can also download... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, you go, if, you, if it's an Android, uh -huh. uh, you can go to um, Google, Play. The Google Play. If it's an Apple uh, iPhone, you go to Apple Store, App Store, and um, download. We have two. Yes. The, the, the one that you, is very applicable for daily life, uh, first mm -hmm. aid by Belize Red Cross. Okay. And that has all sorts of um, tips. Uh, and how to respond, you know, burns, mm -hmm. scratches, a heat stroke, a CPR, everything is, and it has little videos to demonstrate where necessary. Yes. And, and the other one is um, multi hazards Belize. You search for multi hazards Belize, yeah. and that will give you instructions uh, how to prepare yeah. and respond to earthquakes, floods, hurricanes. Emergency numbers, yeah. Yes. So two apps that uh, you can be able to get that are specific for Belize. Um, so you do want to look for them and download them. And uh, of course, some of the additional training people can access right there at Belize Red Cross as well. Right. All right. Thank you once again. 
We're gonna go ahead now and take our final break and when we come back, we'll have our wrap up, so stay tuned.